let's carry on where we left. We talked about attenuation coefficients, more importantly, the linear attenuation coefficient, which tells you about the intensity of an X-ray beam and how it decreases with unit distance. Now, the mass attenuation coefficient is more often useful uh, because it allows you to compare different materials. The mass attenuation coefficient represents how the intensity of the beam decreases as it passes through unit mass of a particular medium. So you could work it out by using the linear attenuation coefficient divided by the density. So what we're going to talk about now is what makes a good x-ray. Now one thing that will make a better x-ray is to increase the contrast of an image. Now the contrast of an image is the difference between the dark and light areas. And another a different way that you can increase the quality of an image is to increase the sharpness of an image and I've put it here but it's actually a mistake so we're going to talk about sharpness and contrast separately now contrast can be improved by giving patients a contrast medium um, something to drink commonly barium sulfate as bone for example absorbs barium sulfate and so therefore um, as the x-ray is taken, the x-rays are absorbed by a greater amount and it shows up regions where it is present. And this causes greater contrast. Okay, which has nothing to do with this. We'll get rid of that. Okay. Um, so that's one way, one way of increasing contrast. Sharpness is a different thing. Sharpness refers to how well-defined the edges of the object in the image are. So you can see here we have a very sharp image and we'll have a look at how to improve that in a minute. The image quality is about the contrast, so we're coming back to contrast again and this gives you a really good example of what contrast looks like. This is low contrast and this is very high contrast. Again, it's the difference between the clear and the dark areas. So barium sulfate, for example, if you drink, it will be absorbed by the bones. So as the x-rays go through, then the bones will absorb more x-rays, increasing the difference between the two areas. So high contrast gives nice clear images. And now we're going to look at how to increase sharpness. 
Now, increasing sharpness is all about the source of the X-ray. And as you can see from these images, the smaller the like point or the emission of the X-rays, the source focal spot, the greater the sharpness will be. Because what we're trying to avoid is this area of shadow, right? These shadows are caused when you have a focal spot which is wide. Because having a wide focal point means that you get light coming from lots of different directions, therefore causing overlaps in the light. So if this is our subject, this is what we're taking a picture of, the light can overlap in varying intensities to cause a shadow. But if you have a really small focal point like that, then you get a sharp edge because there isn't shadow forming. Okay, So making the source of x-rays as point-like as possible lends focus to an image because the image is actually a shadow. right? So if you think about it, when you put your image here and there's your x-ray source, a shadow is formed. The sharper the source of x-rays, the less blurring there is around the edges of the image. So that's going to increase the sharpness of your picture. Now reflection is another thing that causes blurry pictures. So you can increase the contrast of an image by using something called a collimating grid. And a collimating grid what it does is it just basically absorbs all the free x-rays that are flying around that you don't need anymore. So if we have a look here, here's our x-ray source. And as it shines on the patient, the, pho the photos taken on the film and the oscillating grid, what it does is it pretty much just absorbs any ray that's not directly going into the film. Okay, so you only get a picture formed from the x-rays that go through the body into the film and no reflection of any other surface. Another way of increasing this contrast by making the image brighter is by using an intensifying screen. Okay, you can see them on the picture here. These are intensifying screens. These contain fluorescent materials that when they're hit by the x-rays, they emit light. So therefore, the photographic film is not just receiving x-rays, it's receiving x-rays and the light given off by this fluorescent film, which is much more intense. So therefore, your image is intensified. Okay, so we have contrast agents, collimating grids, intensifying screens, and small point x-ray sources. These are four things that will increase the contrast and sh or sharpness of your image. So have a go at this past paper question and uh, check the answers by uh, playing the video. Okay, so did you get it right? What do we mean by sharpness? How easy it is to see the edges of different organs? And how can you increase the sharpness of an x-ray image? By using point x-ray sources, by using collimating grids, or, and this is a new one, by using software to enhance the image. I haven't seen that in a book for a while, but it's on the mark scheme, so we'll use it. So use those three. Those three will increase the x-ray image. Now remember, some of the other things that we mentioned are specifically about contrast, so you've got to be careful with what the question's about. This question is about the linear absorption coefficient. So have a go at it and we'll go over the answers in a minute. So part one suggests why it's desirable to remove the low energy photons from the beam. Low energy photons are pretty useless for making images. 
all they'll do is go around ionizing pits of your body. So um, pretty much the answer would be they'll be absorbed without contributing to the image, so therefore could be dangerous. So that's a bit of a waffly question. Um, determine for x-rays ray, x of energy 50 kilo-evolts kilo the percentage of the incident intensity that is transmitted through a tissue section of thickness 2 centimeters. So for that we need to use the graph. Okay, so if we have a look at the graph, make it bigger. What you can see is that at 50 kilo-evolts we have a value of 0.2 per centimeter per centimeter so that's your attenuation coefficient at that value now if you have the attenuation coefficient and you have the thickness of the tissue section you can now work out the percentage of intensity incident intensity that's transmitted now by percentage intensity we do we're basically looking at this the intensity left after the x-rays have gone through two centimeters of material. So we need to work out this value. That's why they haven't given you the initial incident intensity because it's not, not necessary. So if you plug in your value for the attenuation coefficient, or the absorb sorry, the linear absorption coefficient, and your value which is all in centimetres, so you can plug that in like that. And you should be able to work out your percentage there, which is 67%. So computed tomography. Tomography is a term used to describe obtaining images of three-dimensional objects as a series of sections or slices. Now these give you a much wider, way more detailed image, though they're still using x-rays. They're also called CT scans, you might have had one, and CAT scans, and they're very expensive. Okay, They uh, use expensive equipment and considerable uh, computing power. So let's have a look at a little bit more information. So this is an example of a CT scan for the brain and what you're seeing is lots and lots and lots of different x-rays which are then processed together um, using like very powerful computers to give a three-dimensional image. This can be used in many different parts of the body like the lungs, the heart, etc. to show varying or differences in density. Now you might ask yourself why do we use x-rays when we have these CT scans that give us so much detail? Well, x-rays have their advantages. They are super simple, very cheap, although the, I don't think they like cost much in the IB as an advantage, but it's also worth, worth having in the back of your mind. There's X-rays are really available. They're a very traditional f form of medical imaging, and so they're, they're always around in hospitals. So they're abundant. They're good for certain parts of the body, so like bone, um, that's all you need. You just need an X-ray. However, they're not very good at body function diagnosis. They can't tell you how something is working. It's a photo, after all. It's not like a movie. Um, it's not very good for differentiating one structure from another. So if you have... Um, structures of similar density, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. They have poor resolution, so they don't give you that much detail. In order to take good pictures, you need enhancing materials, which we've talked about before, the contrast agents. And radiation is dangerous to health. Too much X-ray radiation can be quite dangerous. So they have their advantages, but... So let's have a look at CT scans and why. CT scans are good for 3D imaging. Um, they'll give you cross sections so you can see like really deep into an area. The resolution is much better than for x-rays. So you get a lot more detail. And you can even see things like tumor detection. Now tumor detections would show up as areas of increased density. So if you can tell the different areas and different densities, you can you can spot a tumour. 
and also for stroke detention detections because again that will show you when if there's some kind of a density increase in certain parts of the like circulatory system they don't tell you what's going on with organ function again because it's a snapshot it's not a film it's a photo radiation is not good for health and they're more expensive than x-rays